Hello everyone. Today we'll be going over how to create and destroy game objects with C Sharp in Unity. Now, as you can see here, when I click play, two game objects get created under my player game object here, and then they get destroyed shortly after, like so, they've been deleted. So we'll be going over that. Now, if you'd like to jump straight to the code, it's in the description as always. Please give the video a like if that's helpful in any way. And uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so in a fresh scene, let's start off by quickly creating somewhere for our script to live. So for this, we'll create a simple empty game object and we'll call it player. Let's do that. Next, we'll create our C Sharp script and we will call it um, create and destroy. Just something simple. And we'll go ahead and attach this script to our player game object. So we will execute during runtime. Okay, now we have that. Let's quickly make a prefab for us to use in this script. This will essentially be a game object that you've already set up and configured that is ready to be spawned into the game world. Now, a good example of a prefab is, let's say, a rocket, which will contain movement scripts, metal textures, and fire effects that make up the rocket asset that you can then spawn as a packaged up final asset every time a player fires a rocket launcher, for example. And then in that scenario, the rocket may hit a target, be deleted, and then have an explosion prefab spawned in its place. So prefabs can save you a lot of time. However, for this video, let's go ahead and create just a majestic cube as a prefab. And uh, we just need something simple to demonstrate with. So we'll go ahead and create a cube. doesn't matter what it's called. Everything's set to default. And then we'll drag it from the game into our projects here, project assets. And that will have created a cube prefab. So I can delete this one now from the game world. And now that the uh, scene has been set up, let's go ahead and open the script. And we'll remove the sections of code that we don't need. So we don't need the update. Don't need this. Okay. Now there's only one way to destroy a game object, but there are two ways to create one. You can either create an empty game object from scratch and then set it up manually via C Sharp, like add the components manually one by one, add the positions, add the scripts that you want, or you can spawn or instantiate a ready-made asset such as a prefab. So for this script to work, we need it to have access to that prefab in here. So we'll go ahead and quickly create prefab here so we'll say public game object prefab okay we'll save that we'll go back to our editor and then when we click on the player game object you'll see we now have a slot for our prefab so i'm going to drag and drop that in there okay so now our script has access to this prefab so let's go back to the script okay so with that done in the start, so we're just going to have it when the script runs on start. It's just going to create the objects and then destroy them. We're not going to use the update function because we don't want it to be spamming these objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with just creating an empty game object first. So we'll say game object, new game object. So this will be our fresh new one that doesn't have anything attached to it. And we'll say this one is a new game object. And then as one of the arguments, you can specify a name. So we'll say empty game object. And also in here, you can set up some components here that get created by default with the game object. For example, a mesh, textures, effects, scripts, whatever you want. But we're just going to say, we're just going to give it a name. Okay, so now it's created. Let's give it a position. So I'm going to say new game object dot transform dot position equals and then new vector three and I'll just say one 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 just to give you an example and then lastly we will parent it to something so we'll say new game object dot transform dot parent equals transform so this transform here is the transform of the game object that this script is attached to so this script is attached to the player game object Therefore, transform refers to the player's transform. Okay, so 
Now that is roughly how you make a game object from scratch, a nice empty one with C sharp. Now the reason I've done these extra two lines here, the position and parent, is because when you do a new game object here, it doesn't let you specify the position and the parent as an argument, so you have to do that as an extra step. However, when you instantiate a prefab, it does let you specify the position and the parent as arguments. So I'm including these two lines just so I can keep the two methods in sync, which you'll see in a moment. So that is a new fresh game object. Okay. But now we want to create a prefab in our scene instead. So we'll say, okay, game object. Now we'll do our prefab game object. And um, then we'll say instantiate. So this is how you create game objects from prefabs. So the first argument will be the prefab you want to use. So we'll say prefab. Then it's position. So I will say same as this one. Now the arguments are going to become quite long. So I'll break this up into new lines. Like so. Okay. And then I want to specify my parent as well. But you can't just say transform like so. Because the third argument is meant to be the rotations. So you have the prefab, the position, then you have the rotations of this new object, and then you have your parent. But fortunately, if you go quaternion.identity, what this will do is it will create a blank, empty set of rotation values to use on your new prefab, which is kind of nice. And then you can specify your parent. There we go. And then last thing we'll do, because funnily enough, you can't specify a name when you instantiate like you can up here. So we'll say our prefab game object dot name equals prefab game object. So here is the method for creating a new empty game object. And here is the method for instantiating a pre-made game object. And I'm just going to add some comments to show you the different sections here. So. In this section, we create and name a game object. In here, we set the position. And then here, we set the parent. However, when we use instantiate here, we create position and parent the prefab game object that's been spawned in. And here, we set the name. So I'll keep those comments in there so you can see what's happening and where. But that is the code for creating the objects. So now that's finished, we want to then destroy them. So we'll move on to the destroy section, which is not super complex. We just say destroy, destroy, new game object. And then you can specify a delay. So let's say two seconds, just so long enough we can see them in the scene. And then also we'll destroy our other one so we'll say prefab game object and then destroy yourself after four seconds and you can save that now so when i go back to my scene and i click play what it's going to do is it's going to start up it's going to create our empty game object then it's going to create our prefab object then it's going to trigger a destroy after two seconds of the new game object and then it's going to trigger a destroy of the prefab game object after four seconds. So we'll go back to our scene, let it load up. When we'll click play here, we'll see this game objects will be created and parented under the player. So we'll click play. See, there you go, they've been created. And then they've both been destroyed. One after the other, two seconds, then four seconds. We can play that again, just so you can see. Empty ones deleted first, then the prefab one. Cool, and you see the cube as well disappear here. Okay, so that is how to create and destroy game objects in Unity via C Sharp. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, please like and subscribe if you did. I'm hoping to progress to harder and harder videos over time. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.